Okay, so that's the recording button press. So now, okay, everybody. So welcome to the Teaching for Success online conference. This, this is the British Council's first global online conference for teachers and teacher educators. And uh, all the sessions have been recorded, so if you've missed anything, then you can go to the Teaching English website conference pages and find the link to the recordings there. In this plenary talk, we're looking forward to hearing Sally Farley and her session on using assistive technology. To help learners, counsellor, writer and special needs expert. She specialises in inclusive learning tech and is currently researching into the quality of a good teacher from the dyslexic learner's perspective. Assistive technology and its for supporting learners with SEN is another specialisation and Sally has recently completed a chapter on this subject for a new book in, OU, in the OU Into the Class series. Sally's worked as training teachers in creative methodology, then and inclusive learning in the language classroom, both home and abroad for the last 20 years. And she also works as a specialist support tutor for students with dyslexia and other specific learning difficulties at the University of Kent and the University for Creative Arts in Canterbury. She's designed and implemented teacher training courses around the world, and she's been a plenary speaker at many international SEN conferences. Of the British Council's seminar series. She's recently written several modules for the British Council's online course for teachers about SEN, and is currently contributing to UP's upcoming online course on dyslexia and SEN. So, thank you for being with us all here today, Sally. We're all really looking forward to your session on using assistive technology to help learners with SEN. That's lovely. Thank you very much, Ellen. And um, hello, everybody. It's lovely to see so many people from all over the world in all kinds of different contexts. And I know it's been a long day, and this is the final session. Um, but I hope that you will join in with me. I've got a few questions I want to ask you. And of course, at the end, we'll have a good 10 minute uh, question and answer session. So assistive technology is what I'm here to talk about today. Um, and in my work, work at the University of Kent um, as a support tutor for students with dyslexia and other specific learning difficulties, I've seen how advances in technology have had such a great impact, positive impact on these things. So today I'd like to share with you some ideas of how you can implement all of this technology in your classes. Um, okay, so why is it helpful? Well, we call it assistive technology, but from now on, I'm just going to call it technology. It's quicker, really. Um, but it's given these kind of students, students with special needs, opportunities to overcome barriers to learning, difficulties with reading, for example, um, and expressing themselves can be overcome using fairly simple technology. The other thing that I really want to stress is that everything we're going to talk about today is free and simple to use. So no complicated or expensive packages, just things that are usually already available on devices. Um, and we can see how once we get used to bringing these kind of, this kind of technology into our teaching, and showing our students how to use it, then we can really improve our rates of inclusion, inspire everybody. So it's all very positive stuff. 
So technology can help students with special needs in different ways. Firstly, it can help them gain confidence and build their self-esteem. An example of this would be students, uh, a student with autism, for example, social skills in a virtual world for trying them out in the real world. So there's a way there of increasing confidence and building self-esteem through technology. There are plenty of other ways which we'll look at in a while. Now, improving literacy is really what I'm going to concentrate on today um, and how we'll be looking in more detail at how technology can help students overcome trouble, difficulties reading, writing, spelling. Also, technology can encourage students with special needs to work more independently. Once they've understood the app on, on their iPhone or their phone or the PC, they can cap on um, achieving on their own. And that again builds self confidence. Technology also allows them to show what they know in different ways. Uh, for example, instead of um, writing uh, about what they did over the holidays or what their thoughts are about certain things, they could record a vlog, a video blog, um, and therefore show what they know. Overcoming frustration and tiredness, particularly true for those with dyslexia, who can become exhausted and demotivated in class if there's a lot of reading involved. So this kind of technology and support we're going to look at will show you how you can help them overcome these feelings in classroom and these barriers to learning. Now this is my poll. I'm, I'm interested to know what devices you use in your classes, if any, um, and also what your students use. So I hope that the poll will come up now and you can tell me if you use PCs in your classes, laptops, tablets, whether they're iPads or Android, who has an interactive whiteboard in the class and who allows their students to use smartphones. And here it comes. Okay, so interesting results here. The most people seem to have PCs yeah, and laptops. They're kind of 41% both I've got here. Quite a lot of people use a lot of smartphones and that's something to look about because it's quite controversial uh, using class, but uh, it depends a lot on the age and maturity of your students. But they can be wonderful tools for learning if used correctly. 29, 30% of people have said that they have interactive whiteboards, which are wonderful pieces of technology which can really motivate students with special needs. Um, so thank you, but laptops are coming out as the, the top with 58%, 60% we're still climbing people using laptops. So that's great. Now, what I want to say to you is it doesn't matter which device or devices you have access to and which your students use because nearly all devices have inbuilt accessibility now i'll explain to you what that is but first of all i want to show you perhaps the most important website i can't go on to it because there's not time to go into it in real time but at the University of Kent, where I work, uh, we pride ourselves on our accessibility website, which is available to all students and also to all of you. So anybody who wants to access this, all they need to do is go on to kent.ac.uk and then search for productivity. It's very simple to get on there. If you're recommending this site to any of your colleagues, then you can tra they can translate it if, it's, if English is a problem for them using Google Translate. So all of these 
suggestions, apps, and so on will be available in whatever language you want. Um, you can see that the sites, the pages are divided up. So free and built-in accessibility is what we're going to be looking at in a moment. So how you can find things that already exist on the smartphone or the laptop or the iPad. Okay, um, ways of using images, video and sound, planning and note-taking, suggestions for using technology to help with planning and note-taking, which is difficult for a lot of students with special needs, um, reading and display screens, so ways of changing the display to make them more user-friendly. Children and students who have trouble with visual stress, for example, can change the background colour or the size of the font or even the type of the font to make it more easy for them to read, more restful, overcome the exhaustion that comes from visual stress. Text to speech is something that I'm going to look at in this session in a moment. So, how the computer can read to you. Time management and focus, often a problem for students with special needs, how to, how to focus, how to concentrate, how to understand and manage their time. So lots of apps, all free here, to help with time management. Voice recognition, we're going to look at as well as the advice and types for you. And writing, writing. Suggestions anybody has of new apps they've discovered or new technology or techniques, you can send in, which will help us to carry on building these pages and keep them. Right up to date. So hope you all use that. Now we're talking already exist on devices. If you, if you click onto that little icon that I showed you, you'll be taken to another site which is called My Computer, My Way. So whatever you want your device to do, you can find out how to My Way. So as I've said here, once you know the principle and the task you want to achieve, then Whatever device you use, and whatever package you've got, it doesn't matter. The technique will be just a question of finding it, finding where the voice is or finding the accessibility options. So text-to-speech is the first thing we're going to look at here, supporting literacy. Now, nearly all computers come with a built-in voice. It's just there somewhere. It's just a question of finding it. And my computer, my way, will show you how to on your particular device. It reads out text from the screen. So for students with dyslexia and other reading difficulties, this can make an enormous difference to them and their learning. Students who read hesitantly and find it hard to concentrate on text can find this particular text-to-speech um, technology incredibly helpful. I think you'll know those of you who teach students with dyslexia, their reading very, they often get stuck on an unfamiliar word and being stuck on an unfamiliar word then causes them to lose the meaning of the whole text that they're trying to read. So this kind of text to speech technology enables students to carry on reading without getting stuck. So it basically provides fluency for them, which in turn provides meaning. So some students have difficulty with eye tracking, keeping their place in the text. Students again with dyslexia, this is often a problem. So this particular text-to-speech option helps them keep their place, stops them getting Okay, no key function is what it's known as, and you'll see, you see why. Um, because it highlights the words, 
as it needs them, which helps the student to focus and stay on track. Um, you, once you get used to it, and some of you probably already use it, you can vary the speed that it reads at, and you can vary the number of words that it highlights at a time. And the most important thing is really to tailor this to the inner student's needs. So you find out from the student what speed suits them best and encourage them then into the into independence so that they can work this themselves and use it to their advantage. Okay, now I know that we've got some primary teachers here today as well as secondary teachers and technology and early reading support technology can make a big difference. Um, I've given you um, a list of apps underneath here which um, I'm sure that you'll be able to get back on the recording of this um, of apps that can encourage early reading. And the way they work, okay, Again, some of you already know this, but they they have games and puzzles to learn familiar sounds and word families. So they're enjoyable and rewarding and therefore motivating for students. Now we know that a lot of uh, students, dyslexia for example, take longer to learn to read, need more practice, they need more repetition. Um, and technology can provide that. It also allows them to manipulate letters, to move them around, to make words, which appeals to the kinesthetic learning preference, uh, which is often, of, often uh, fed by students with special needs. Okay, they can practice rhyming, blending, and chunking skills. These are all skills that uh, students with dyslexia and children with dyslexia find difficult and need to practice and overlearn. Um, they introduce the complexities of English spelling systematically, and we know how annoying and difficult English spelling can be. So, um, technology can really help with this. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying not to read. The, I'm getting distracted by the chat that's going on, but uh, as I say, we'll have questions at the end here. Um, it allows high frequency words to be repeated and practiced until they enter the long term memory. So, this overlearning and repetition that's needed more by students with special needs than maybe than others can happen. you're not sure how to find it on your device, then go to my computer, my way, the recognition software is. So what it does is it converts spoken words into text and it can do this in any language. Very useful because it's a good and very often those with dyslexia are able um, at expressing themselves until they have to write and then they encounter a barrier and this barrier can be overcome through voice recognition software. <coughs> Excuse me. It means they can dictate their ideas as they have them quite often students are inspirational students with dyslexia particularly inspirational creative thinkers who get lots of ideas at once but if they have to worry about spelling or worrying about sentence construction for example that can hold up them from being sick those with dyslexia or other coordination difficulties um, 
can really be supported through voice recognition software because they don't need to write by hand and they don't either need to type. And also they can control the computer through commands, through verbal commands. Okay, now I know I've got to go a bit faster, I'm running out. Touch typing is very, it's worth students learning how to touch type. It'll put them at a great advantage in later life. So for those with poor handwriting, their word, their work can become legible and they can write more quickly if they know how to touch type. Those with working memory difficulties don't have to keep shifting attention from the keyboard to the screen. Okay, if they can touch type, they don't need to keep that information in their working memory. So that takes the strain of working memory. And those who can't spell often helps them to learn common patterns, spelling patterns, particularly in English, kinesthetically. So if you're constantly typing T-I-O-N, the, the pattern you're using will help you remember the spelling kinesthetically. There are lots of free um, touch typing apps. The BBC has got a great one called Dance Map Typing, but there's plenty of others if you put uh, free touch typing games into Google. And we'll be doing your students a great service if you show them how to do that. Okay, everyone, so I've gabbled my way to the end of this, but we've had a look at the way that technology can assist uh, in literacy, overcoming barriers to learning. Now, have we got any questions? We've got 10 minutes to go, and um, I could see various comments coming up uh, on my left. So anybody to ask me anything, this is the moment. Um, I hope that I didn't go too far for you, but I would recommend having a bit of time on the University of Kent's accessibility pages and just playing around um, Yes, just playing around there and seeing what's available. Um, there are lots of other things that I haven't had time to talk to you about. So, question I've, that's come up here then, how to deal with where technology is not that advanced? Okay, so um, when we say technology is not that advanced, do I, uh, are we saying that we don't have um, any internet connection or we don't have any any technological devices at all. Um, speech to text, for example, and voice recognition software is usually available on laptops and PCs without the need to go onto the internet. So, and also, as I say, available on smartphones. So quite a lot of um, these things that I've mentioned are available without having to have extremely advanced internet connection or extremely quick devices. Um, if we don't have sufficient lab for learn, learn, language learning, how do you suggest we use technology and limited internet access? So I think I just answered that really, that, that speech to text is usually inbuilt into the device and doesn't need um, any kind of internet connection. Um, how can we help students who find it hard to speak in front of the class because they are too anxious? Well, yeah, anxiety, um, of course, is a massive barrier to learning and it is a problem for a lot of students with special needs, the, the fear of failure, the lack of self-confidence and so on. Um, what I say to my students, even at university level, um, some of them are really frightened of talking and making presentations, which they often have to do. Um, I always get them to rehearse of the video camera if they've got one like this. So when they have to actually stand up and speak in front of the class, they've already practiced, it's not new. Um, so technology can be used to help build confidence um, of speaking in front of other people. Now, 
Yes, of course, there are some schools where technology isn't available. I totally understand that. And uh, obviously, these can't be used. Um, when there isn't technology. Again, smartphones, yes, but no data outside campus. Um, Smartphones can be used. Um, I notice my students use them all of the time to record and And these things require internet instruct. Uh, well, obviously, it depends how um, they're used. But the tools that I've just talked about, um, speech to text and voice recognition, um, distracting, they are just enabling. Um, they, they, I've seen what a difference they make to students with dyslexia and other learning difficulties um, and how much they've helped these particular forms of technology have helped them to overcome a lot of difficulties. So I think the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Um, can we use technology when teaching to teenagers? Somebody has asked, um, and I would say definitely yes, teenagers tend to love technology and find technology very reassuring and easy. In fact, they are often better at technology than, than we are as teachers. So I think if you do use technology with teenagers, you'll find they're very motivated. Um, now, what else have we got? Are the CDs available or do we have to download? Mm, uh, Sorry, I'm not quite sure what that question means there, but um, if you go to the accessibility uh, website at the University of Kent, you know, some things um, need to be downloaded and others don't. It just depends really what you're, what you're actually going for. Um, what are some of the practical steps in which I can help my students who can't read? Well, talking of um, the early games and apps I gave you some links to at the beginning of my talk, um, these are really very um, helpful for students who have difficulty learning to read because they allow them to practice and repeat as many times as they need to um, until they can remember the words and start linking them together. Um, they can start from very basic understanding the very big building blocks of language, the, the sounds and the phonemes and their correspondence to letters, and then how they blend together in to make words. So technology for those who find it difficult to read can be very helpful indeed. Yes, somebody's asking what about if you don't have the internet, but I think I've already probably answered that question. The internet isn't necessary for the built-in accessibility uh, things that I, I mentioned to you before. Um, can voice recognition software take responses from more than one student at a time? I don't think so. Um, I think that would be very confusing for it, but obviously if you have two laptops and two students, then they can be, they can both be working independently and the different laptops will be recording what they're saying, what the individual students are saying. Uh, so now I th think we're about to run out of time, guys. So 
I just see if there's any any other question that I haven't addressed here. Um, oh, do I think that online courses and platforms will replace schools in the future? Um, no, well, I hope not, because I think although tech tool um, in education and can be blended in the classroom, it'll never take the place of a good teacher and a real life one to one with class situation. Technology can never replace a real person. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, thank you very much, Sally, for your fascinating talk and so, so many useful links and ideas there for helping students with special needs. It's a pleasure. Um, um, th <laughs> thanks to everyone for coming today and joining us in the session. And um, remember to come back tomorrow because we have lots more interesting sessions um, to share with you on Saturday and Sunday. Um, I'll now be um, sharing with you the certificate and um, information about uh, our forthcoming MOOC, which is a free online course which starts on Monday. survey that's a great prize for anybody um, who's interested in teaching online thanks again to everyone for all, all your participation all your comments and especially thank you to you sally for for giving us the uh, plenary talk end of today so thank you very much everybody and see you tomorrow